The vast majority of models of all types are made in South China. So it's time for Cranes Etc to pay a visit and see where the models are made. China has a great history of course, but it's not a backward country. It's an economic powerhouse and the cities in southern China are ultra modern. And the reason it's like that is because they make things. Our first stop is a look at a WSI models factory in Dongguan. The details of how models are made is the subject of a separate video. But as a taster, here we see a model on the assembly line. It's WSI Models Big Leap Hair LTM 1500 and it's in the colours of Vazel. And the first thing you notice is the amount of detailed work that's required. One of the interesting things in the factory is that there are models being made which haven't been announced yet. It's on the road to our next location and the things you notice are that the roads are good quality and most of the cars are new. It's also a bit of a racetrack and an exciting ride. Our next stop is a modern factory and it's the Yu Li Corporation. Yu Li is responsible for producing the die-cast masters range of models and there were plenty on display in the showroom area. But this is where the die-cast masters range of models are made so let's have a look around the factory. And one of the interesting things to see is that there's a surprising amount of automation and a shortage of labour is a factor in South China. Yuli also makes plenty of other kinds of models and here are some castings for cars. And to make a finished scale model, there are many different processes. But let's go over to the Diecast Masters assembly line and see what's going on. Here we see some forestry models on the line and yes, the tracks get a good workout. And later on in the process, the assembled models get ready for the tins. And it's good to see that models can't make a dash for it on the conveyor belt, hoping to escape the tin. Later on in the line, the top foam is added, a brochure's put in, and the lid's put on. The tins then get put in their nylon bags, ready for the final outer box. And then when everything's done, the final tape seal is put on, and the models are boxed up, ready for shipping. One of the games they play in China is Tigenza, and as you can see it involves keeping a shuttlecock in the air using your feet. Groups of people play this in a local park and they're good at it. It's also interesting that it's mainly played by older people. It's back on the road to the big city of Guangzhou. Here we find the South China University of Technology. And it's a massive campus with around 100,000 students. But interestingly, even here you'll find scale models. And that's because they have a special hall of replicas with models on display. On show are a whole range of models from Chinese cars to farm equipment. And there's modern day construction and haulage equipment also. Of course, no collection is complete without the big Mammut PTC. And there was also plenty of high quality models of cars, ranging from old to new. From the university, we go into Guangzhou City, and we get to a shop, which is the carfansclub.com. And here's the owner, CK, and he has one of the largest collections in South China with over 3,000 models. The collection includes models of every type, including loads of cars, as you'd expect, but there's also lots of construction equipment. And there are also some larger scale old models of cars and traction engines. It's all arranged over several floors of display cases. And it's certainly an interesting place for any collector to visit. And if you like something different, how about an aquarium with some old scale models in it? So, China is a modern country, but it is interesting what you find on the breakfast table in the morning. The hotel offered something called the horseshoe cake, but it's not really clear what it was. Some of the other interesting selections were grilled eggplant with card, really. Or how about baked beans with winner? 
If you'd like a change, you could have Newcomb Fried Eggs Angle. And never forget that cards are potatoes. Turnip Barrel Bone might be nice. And there was always coarse food. But for something different, you could have Thai Carbon Burning the Pork Neck. Or the unforgettable Free Yarn Steaming the Jazz. After breakfast, we're off to the Wan Ho factory. And what a big factory it is. There's a very large area for assembling models, but of course that's only the back end of the process. At the front end is making the tooling for the models, and there are whole banks of CNC milling machines. These are used to form the moulds which are used in the die casting process. The first stage is to use these machines to mill out the main mould parameters, and then electrical arc etching is used to add finer detail to the moulds. Also at the Wanho factory they have their own collection gallery and that's another very large showroom that highlights all of the products that they've made over the years. And it's certainly a large and impressive collection. Wanho has produced models of all types in many different sectors but they've always had a big focus in the construction area. And an impressive part of the display are the large cranes including again the Mammut PTC and the Manotowok range. It's back to the WSI factory in Dongguan, so let's take another look and see what's happening there today. And again, the model making process is covered in more detail in another video. There is actually a lot of engineering in model making, and extensive use is made of computer aided design. One of the techniques in use is vacuum coating for painting, and this technique produces an efficient, high quality finish. Back on the assembly line and there's still plenty of work to do and that includes separating plastic parts from the moulding sprues. And in production is another Liebherr mobile crane, this time it's the 1350 in Nordic colours. All of the parts are individually checked to make sure they work properly. And at each stage the model parts are checked and touched up prior to assembly. Once the model is assembled there's another check to make sure that moving parts work properly. And then the completed parts of the model go through to the packing process. Here they're given a final clean and there's also another inspection of the model to make sure that it's basically okay. And when they're all finally packed, they're on the forklift and into the container, ready for shipping overseas. The city of Guangzhou is modern and it includes one of the tallest structures in the world. And it is the Canton Tower, which is around 600 metres high to the top of the aerial. There's an observation deck at 450 metres which gives stunning views over the city. And there's also a tramway which goes around the edge and it has small observation cars on it. The Canton Tower is also home to the highest thrill ride in the world. And it's not something you'd want to do after having baked beans with winner. Today we're visiting some of the smaller factories in Dongguan and this one is making the new Manitowoc crawler cranes for Vice Brothers and Towsleys. The MLC 650 will be a huge crane some 8 feet tall and just by chance Milo Vice is in the factory to give us some stats about it. Yeah, Some, some facts that really blow me away are um, over the last month and a half the factory here has produced 25,000 boom sections and that covers uh, both cranes. Uh, the 650 has over 3,500 parts, and that's screws, nuts, bolts, pins, you know, track shoes. But those numbers are <laughs> pretty amazing. You can hear more from Milo in a separate video. Meanwhile, in the factory, the work is progressing, and here we see tampo printing. This is applying the colours of red and black separately onto Manitowoc nameplates. As you can see, each part is taking around 15 seconds to produce, and they will go into a tray ready for further assembly. In another part of the factory, parts are being sprayed, and here this is being done conventionally by hand spraying. If we move over to the assembly line, we see parts for the crane bodies being assembled, and it's all intricate work. Also in China it seems everyone gives a hand on the production line, even wannabe pop stars. 
At another factory we can see the bodies for the Ford F250, which are being made for sword models. These have been a long time coming, but here they are in the metal, and they will soon be going into assembly. At another factory there are very high quality resin fire engine replicas being made, and there may not be many moving parts, but the detail level is exceptional. Also at this factory, Vice Brothers are making another large model, but for now it's a secret until it's announced for the Con Expo exhibition in 2017. For the last day of our tour we're back at Wan Ho, and that's because Wan Ho make models for Drake collectibles, and it just so happens that Bruce Hay is in town. Today I'm at the Wan Ho Industry Factory in Dongguan, China. Uh, the Wanho factory is the factory we use to produce our swing wing low loaders and our Kenworth trucks, including the Cranes Etc. award winning best new tool for 2015. So why do Drake Collectibles use Wanho? We use Wanho as one of the factories because of its, its long term establishment, uh, its creative engineering department and it's the one-stop shop. There's die-cast casting here, engineering here, tooling here, painting here, so everything that's produced is here. We have a, an ongoing team here, as long as we keep some production there, we have a team of people who concentrate and work on Drake models. This helps ensure the quality of the model and that they meet our expectations in the field. One reason for visiting the factory is to review the progress of new products. What we have to do is add another deco. Mm -hmm in here for this. Yes. This is this is all good. Mud yards are right, mud flaps are, are okay. Mm -hmm. um, we need to ensure that there is sufficient clearance for the steel peg. Yeah. The decals are correct yeah. on the back. It needs license plate yeah. on there. And uh, the other issue of the pin, no, that's that's been sorted. No, that's that's good. So this will be one of our next releases. This is the freighter, what we call a B trailer. It's a flat top trailer and used for B doubles and road trains in Australia. It's not uncommon in Australia to have four or five of these trailers together. Now this comes with a few of the standard Drake features of working suspension, wind down legs. There's not too many we can, we can include, but some of the things we have included is proper steel gates to make them stronger, more robust, and they'll come in a, in a variety of different colours and liveries in Australian transport. These uh, have taken a bit longer to get out through the system than we originally planned. We, we did hope to have these sort of mid-2016, but unfortunately due to a few contractual issues out of our control, they were, they were delayed while a bit of red tape was sorted out. These are some of the future projects we've got going here at Wanho under the development stage. We're producing the complete Maxi Trans range, which includes uh, Maxi Cube, Freighter, Lusty MS. So here we have some of the typical A and B type trailers. This is like a, a torque liner. At the back here is the, the slider side, which can be a refrigerated truck, and the slide sides actually open and close on this, like the real model. So once again, same sort of functions and features of working suspension, wind down legs. So these are stuff to look forward to in the future. So that completes our tour of some of the factories of South China. But there is much more detail about how models are made in a separate video. Mm -hmm.